Hi LEGO fans, LEGO has been around for a pretty long time. In fact, this year LEGO is celebrating the 60th anniversary of the filing of the patent for the LEGO brick. The patent was filed on July 28, 1958 by inventor Godfred Kirk Christiansen. To celebrate this momentous anniversary, the LEGO group have created a commemorative set. And today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing Set number 40290, 60 Years of the Brick. This set is a free giveaway at the LEGO store and online at shop.lego.com. To qualify to receive this set, you just need to spend more than $125 at the LEGO store. That's quite a lot of money, but it seems there are quite a lot of takers. The online LEGO store has already run out of stock, and these are changing hands on eBay for upwards of $40. So if you do want one of these and you haven't already got one, you need to act quickly. The set features four miniature builds based on iconic LEGO sets from the last 60 years. Set number 375, Castle from 1978. Set number 928, Space Cruiser and Moonbase from 1979. Set number 6285, the Black Seas Barracuda from 1989. And set number 6399, Airport Shuttle from 1990, which featured the much loved monorail system. The back of the box contains photographs of all the sets on which these miniatures were based, and two photos of what must have been the luckiest kid alive. And there's also the old fashioned Lego system logo. I didn't have any of these sets when I was a kid, but I did have quite a few Lego space sets and even some Lego castle sets. I still own those today. So this set is very nostalgic for me and I can't wait to get it open. So let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. It's really a shame to do this because I have a feeling this is going to become very collectible. But we can't review Lego without taking it out of the box. So here goes. Here's everything that came inside the box. We've got four numbered bags of Lego and it seems like we've got one for every set. And an 83 page instruction manual. I'm gonna go ahead and put together all four micro builds and this is gonna be a 90 second speed build. And here are the completed builds which collectively make up a very nice snapshot of LEGO history. It's a good sized set with 421 pieces, especially when you consider it's a giveaway. Being in the micro scale it was a little bit fiddly to build and in total these models took about 45 minutes to put together. These are very much display pieces and not toys and first impressions are pretty good. But let's take a look at each one of these in detail. I'm going to do this in chronological order, starting with the castle. First up we have a miniature representation of set number 375, the famous Yellow Castle from 1978. Lego sets remained on sale for much longer back in the 1970s and 80s, and I remember seeing this on the shelves of my local toy store when I was a kid. But with a 767 piece part count, which included four minifigures and four brick built horses, this was one of the biggest sets on sale, and as such it had one of the biggest price tags. And I never got this one. If you happen to still have one of these mint in box, it's easily going to sell for $500 plus. As you'd expect with such a small build it's not perfect but it comes pretty close. The main tower and ramparts are missing the 1x2 blocks of the original but the actual studs of the Lego bricks kind of make up for that missing detail. We get a sense of the original green base plate at the bottom and there's a working red 
drawbridge, just like the original. With so many minifigures, the original was definitely designed as a playset, and this has a nice feature mirroring the original, in that you can open up the sides and access all the space in the middle of the castle. I'm actually breaking it there, but I'll put that back on. As you can see, we've got all of that open space in the middle. From the sides, you can see we've got some yellow slope pieces making up the buttresses of the castle walls. These help to make the castle walls really, really strong and were ever present on the original model. Looking up from below the castle, you can also see we've got some black detailing here, which represents the inverse slopes used to create the castle roof. We've got a couple of headlight bricks representing the window on the main tower. And I really like the fact that if you turn this around, they are actually blanked on the back. And it's from the back of the model you can see the rear entrance complete with two red doors. So a solid start from the 1978 Lego castle. Let's wind the clock forward to 1979. And from 1979 we have this miniature representation of set number 928 Space Cruiser and Moonbase from Lego Space. This is instantly recognisable with those iconic greys, blues and of course the transparent yellow. This was a 338 piece set that came with a special base plate with craters and four astronaut minifigs two white and two red. This newer model is definitely not to minifigure scale and to give you a sense of size here are two original LEGO Space Astronauts. In fact they're ever so slightly taller than the new model. As well as the four minifigures this contained a large spacecraft, a ground base with landing pad, a control tower and a small space rover. For some reason set number 928 Space Cruiser and Moon Base wasn't available in the United States. Instead they had set number 497 Galaxy Explorer which was exactly the same size set, even down to the LL928 printed on the hull. The ship is detachable which allows you to take a closer look and also reveals the landing bay underneath. Clearly there's a lot of detail missing here due to the ship's small scale, but I do think this is a really nice representation and it's instantly recognisable as a ship that inspired Benny's spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. The original landing pad was a printed base plate, but I do think they've done a nice job of representing it here. The tower is very minimal and doesn't really look like the real thing except for the obvious use of colour. And at this micro scale, the already small rover was going to be very difficult to recreate. But I think they've done a nice job using a roller skate and a one by one stud. The scale of this model really hinders it in terms of detail, but I think it hits a home run in terms of being instantly recognisable as a set that it portrays. And with that, let's leapfrog forward a whole decade to 1989. This is a much bigger and taller micro build and represents a classic Lego pirate set 6285 Black Seas Barracuda. Black Seas Barracuda was the biggest of the four sets represented in 60 Years of the Brick. This came with 909 pieces, including eight minifigures, and a notorious Captain Redbeard. The masts and sails are very nice recreations with that classic red and white design. And we even have flags on top, but obviously lacking that skull and crossbones from the original. I'm not so sure about the shade of colour blue used for the sea. Maybe this would have looked better with a darker blue. But we do get two red pieces on each side, representing the covers for the cannons. The build is symmetrical on both sides and makes great use of modern pieces as well as classic pieces to recreate the shape of the original ship. The only real annoyance with this otherwise very nice micro build are the sails. These things are on pivots and every time you pick it up those sails flop about everywhere. They literally spin around like this and it just makes it really difficult to line them up correctly. Jumping ahead to 1990, we have what for me is the most difficult micro build to interpret. This represents set number 6399 Airport Shuttle with 767 pieces. This is one of only a couple of sets to feature the beloved monorail system. There was another set in 1987, the Space Monorail Transport System, and a couple of accessory packs which enabled you to extend your monorail. Monorail elements are now highly prized by collectors, and you often see elaborate creations made out of monorail systems by adult fans at various LEGO fairs. From the back of the model it's a little bit easier to interpret. We've got the monorail with the cars on either end and then the power plant in the middle. You can also see the red light and the green light that you typically get on railway systems. Underneath we've got six stanchions elevating the track and around the front you can see details symbolising the concourse and the station. We even have the teeny tiny snack bar, the staircase and the station complete with a white stud on top representing the sign. So while this might not be as instantly recognisable as the other models, once you compare the micro build to pictures of the real thing, you can really appreciate how the designers of this micro build brought the details of the original to life. And before we wrap up, there's one more model we need to take a look at. This fantastic retro set also comes with a 60 Years of the Brick commemorative plaque. 
It's a very simple construction featuring a super exclusive 2x4 printed tile, mounted on a brand new red brick, and tilted into a recline position to complement your retro display. So that was set number 40290, 60 years of the brick, a Lego store exclusive giveaway set, celebrating 60 years since the filing of the patent for the Lego brick. I use the word giveaway very loosely because this did require $125 spend, but this is a lot bigger and definitely more desirable than your average Lego store giveaway. I think this set is squarely aimed at adult fans of Lego and collectors. Certainly for me, having lived through all of these eras and seen these actual Lego sets on the shelves, this gives me a great sense of nostalgia and I really do like this set. If my math is correct, the original sets came with about 35 minifigures in total, and it would have been nice if LEGO had added maybe just one retro minifigure from each one of these sets. But overall, this is a good representation of the most classic themes in LEGO. And if you've not already laid your hands on this set, you might now find it a little bit difficult, but it's definitely worth hunting out for the series collectors. I really do hope you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I release two of these videos every single week so you'll always find something new or something old to check out on my channel. Thanks for joining me on this very retro LEGO review, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.